Today we're going to take a look at equations that generally cause people to cringe, and that's because they involve fractions. And so the very first thing that we're going to focus on when solving equations with fractions is to get rid of the fractions, because then it becomes a problem which is much easier to solve. So to solve equations involving fractions, we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by the least common denominator. So we worked in the, with the least common denominator in the previous chapter. Now we're going to be working with the least common denominator to remove denominators from equations. So in this particular problem, our least common denominator is 21. Since uh, 7 and 3 are both prime, our least common denominator is the product of 7 and 3. And so I'm going to multiply both sides of my equation by 21. So I'm going to have 21 times the quantity x plus x over 7 plus x over 3. And on the right-hand side, I'm going to have 21 times 10. Now, on the left-hand side here, I need to be careful. I want to make sure that I distribute this 21. So I'm going to actually write this as 21 being multiplied by x over 7 plus 21 being multiplied by x over 3, and on the right-hand side we have 210. And now I can actually take and do some canceling here. Uh, 7 goes into 21 three times, and 3 goes into 21 seven times. So we're left with 3 times x, or 3x, plus 7 times x, or 7x, equals 210, and then we have 3x plus 7x equals 10x, that's combining like terms, so 10x equals 210, and then we divide both sides by 10 to get x equals 21, and we can do a quick check here by substituting uh, 21 in for x into our original equation, so we'd have 21 divided by 7, plus 21 divided by 3 equals 10. I'm going to put a little question mark here because we're not sure until we've actually done the calculation. So basically I'm just going back and I'm substituting the uh, 21 in place of x in our original equation. So that's how we got 21 over 7 plus 21 over 3. Uh, 21 over 7 we know is 3 and 21 over 3 is 7. And I think at this point it's very clear to see that 3 plus 7 is equal to 10. So we have 10 equals 10. Let's take a look at another example. Uh, once again, we start by identifying our least common denominator. Here our least common denominator would be 20. So when I write it this time, I'm going to actually show the distribution on the left-hand side. In other words, I'm going to multiply each term on the left-hand side by 20. So I'm multiplying both sides of my equation by 20, our least common denominator. And now I can cancel any common factors. Here I know 5 goes into 20 four times, and I know that 2 goes into 20 10 times, and 20 times 1 over 20, well those are reciprocals, so here we're just going to end up with being left with 1. So we have 4 times 3x, that's 12x, and then 10 times x, that's 10x, and 20 times 1 over 20 was just 1. 12x minus 10x, we can combine those. Combining like terms, we'd have 2x equals 1. And then dividing both sides of our equation by 2 gives us a final answer of x equals 1 half. So notice that after we multiply by the least common denominator, our equation becomes very simple. Let's take a look at another example. Now this one already looks more complex, but we just need to, once again, find the least common denominator of 2, 6, and 4. So our least common denominator is 12. So I'm going to multiply each of our three pieces here, the two terms on the left hand side and the fraction on the right hand side. I'm going to multiply each of those three pieces by 12. So I'm going to have 12 times the 1 fourth times the quantity n plus 2 minus 12 times 1 sixth times the quantity n minus 2 
and then we'd have 12 times 3 halves. So I'm going to be careful here. I want to take just the 12 times the 1 fourth. Uh, 4 goes into 12 3 times. And then I'm going to take the 6, uh, 1 6 times the 12. 6 we know goes into 12 twice. And over here, um, I'm going to think of the 12 as 12 over 1. And realize that uh, 2 goes into 12 6 times. And I'll put a 1 down here for emphasis. So let's take a look at what we have here. We have 3 times 1, which would be 3. So we have 3 times the quantity n plus 2. Minus 2 times 1 will give us 2. So we have minus 2 times the quantity n minus 2. And over here, uh, we have a 1 in the denominator. 1 times 1 is 1. And in the numerator, we have 6 times 3, which is 18. Next, we would distribute, taking the 3 times both the n and the 2 and the negative 2 times both the n and the minus 2. Being careful to make sure this is positive since we have a negative times a negative. And then combining like terms, we'd have n plus 10 on the left hand side equals 18 and then we subtract 10 from both sides and get n is equal to 8. All right, let's take a look at another example similar to this one. Uh, first of all, we're going to identify our least common denominator. Our least common denominator is 15. And remember, we can think of this as being over 1. So I'm going to multiply each of our three pieces here, the two terms on the left and the number on the right. I'm going to multiply each of those pieces by our least common denominator of 15. Because remember, our ultimate goal is to get rid of the fractions. Because having the fractions there is what makes this um, a bit confusing. Or looks confusing. It's not really confusing. It just looks intimidating. So we're going to get rid of those fractions so we're not intimidated anymore. So I've multiplied each piece by 15. And now I'm going to cancel. 3 goes into 15 5 times. 5 goes into 15 3 times. And here I'm just going to be having 15 times 2 which is 30. So here I have 5 times x, which is 5x, and then I'm going to have minus 3 times the quantity x plus 2. So now I'm going to distribute and combine like terms and get x by itself on the left-hand side. Combining like terms, I'd have 2x minus 6 equals 30. And notice you have to be very careful with your signs. When I distributed, I made sure I distributed the negative sign with that 2. Um, then I'm going to add 6 to both sides, so I have 2x equals 36, and dividing both sides by 2, I get that x is 18. All right, let's take a look at one final example. Um, here, our least common denominator is going to involve a variable. Our least common denominator is 12x. So I'm going to multiply each of these three pieces by 12x. So I'm going to have 12x times 3 over x, 3 over x, minus 12x times 1 fourth, and then, oh, 12x, I forgot the x, let's fix that. And then we'd have 12x times 1 over 12. So now I'm going to cancel out my common factors. Notice here the x is canceled, which is great. Um, here 4 goes into 12 3 times, and here the 12s cancel. So then we're left with 12 times 3, which is 36, minus 3x equals just x. So I'm going to add 3x to both sides and then I would get 36 equals 4x and dividing both sides by uh, 4 gives me that x is 9. And remember you can always go back and substitute that number in to check. Let's do a quick little check here. 3 ninths minus 1 fourth is that the same as 1 twelfth? Well, I know 3 ninths is 1 third. Is 1 third minus 1 fourth equal to 1 twelfth? Put a little question mark here because we're checking this. I would rewrite these with common denominators of 12. Uh, 1 fourth becomes 3 twelfths. 1 third becomes 4 twelfths. And when I subtract 3 twelfths from, from 4 twelfths, I do get 1 twelfth. So our solution is correct. 
So if you have any questions, please make sure you bring them to class tomorrow and don't forget to do the survey at tinyurl.